That is going from deficit to surplus. How did he do it? Governor Daniels will tell you. But first, Arizona Senator John McCain goes on the record. The Jobs Act. The president wants to pay for it, and he has sent up his methodology to pay for it. What do you think about it? I think the whole thing is unfortunate because it's clearly a campaign ploy. Uh, the president keeps going around the country saying, pass it now. Pass what? You know that they have not sent over legislation that they want us to pass? One of the reasons is because there are a number of Democrat senators who are up in the 2012 election who are very nervous about something like this. The second thing about it, I think, is it's obvious this bash the rich, uh, class warfare kind of thing that has not worked in the past, and I don't think it's working now. Greta, back in, I think it was 1968, I'm not sure, they were worried about a small number of millionaires that, and so that we have passed this thing called the alternate minimum tax, that very rich people would pay a certain amount. That now affects some three million Americans, and every year we have to de defer it because of the devastating effects that it would have. So. What it is, is that when the president gave a speech uh, at, to the Congress the other night, where you and I both attended, the key phrase was, I will go to all four corners of America in this effort, because it's clear that it's now a campaign ploy. And I look forward to the announcement that Mr. Buffett will send a billion dollar check to the Treasury, because I know of nothing that would keep him from doing so. Well, that was clearly a gimmick. <laughs> you know, I mean, a gimmick is Warren Buffett's out there acting like everyone's preventing him from paying extra taxes. I mean, it's he can like, pay as you know, much as that, he wants. I, mean, I think I assume that backfires because it, you know, it, it, you know, the, everyone knows you can volunteer to pay extra money. That's fine. Um, but there's this concept of, of fair share, and that's been going on. I remember um, hearing it first in about 1992 from President Clinton that the rich have to pay their fair share. And I'm always curious, what, has anyone ever defined what fair share is? What does that mean? Is it by dollar amount? Because if it's by dollar amount, they do. If it's by percentage, um, By I dollar they... amount or percentage, the wealthiest Americans pay the majority of taxes in America. Now, now already. Can, now. And you could argue that they need to pay more. You can argue that. Well, and you can argue, and I think legitimately, that there are loopholes that are exploited. I understand that. But to somehow say that wealthy Americans are not paying a large amount of taxes is uh, contradictory to the facts. And as you know, there are a large number of Americans, and I'm not unhappy about it, lower income Americans who pay no taxes. Now, they still pay sales tax, excise taxes, and a lot of other taxes, but there's a large percentage, I think 47%, of Americans who pay no income taxes. But this is, so, a, this is a revenue issue. You raised that, but this is a revenue issue. Is that while everyone's focusing on on the on like we, you know to get more money, no one's thinking that if we could possibly you know get more jobs. I mean, legitimately get more jobs. I and mean, we now we're two and a half years into this administration, where if we get some of these communities working, they would be paying more income, and so revenue would be less of an issue. So we have this fight over this revenue. Which means that we should put a moratorium on most regulations, that we should fix the tax code to make it fair and close the loopholes and have, say, three uh, tax categories and do the things that would give the businesses, large and small in America, the confidence to go ahead and invest and hire. Any business person you will talk to, whether large or small, will say, I'm holding back. I'm sitting on a lot of cash because I don't know when the next regulation is coming down. And despite what the president said, there have been billions of dollars, uh, billions and billions of dollars that are in new regulations which cost uh, businesses the ability to keep that money and save, but most importantly, to have the confidence to invest and hire. If that, if that is so, I mean, don't you think business leaders Democratic business leaders are saying the same thing to the president. See, this one, because, you know, I, I would think that because there are a lot of very wealthy Democrats, business leaders, who I imagine, if you're, if you're saying what's so, and, I, and I've heard the same thing, is that aren't they saying to the president or to their senators or something about these, about the moratorium on regulations? I think a lot of them are. Um, and there has been lip service paid to regulation. The president did negate one very big environmental regulation, which would have really hurt a lot of utilities, including 
my own state. But when you look at the continued flow of thousands of pages of regulation that come out of the bureaucracy. Let, let me give you the best example. If the president were serious, he would say to the NLRB, the National Labor Relations Board, do not do what you just did in the Boeing case. Boeing makes a planes in Seattle. They have trouble with labor. They want to open a factory in South Carolina. A second one, not, not in lieu of. Not a, in lieu of. This is extra. A second, extra a second one, and the National Labor Relations Board says they can't do it. Now, you're the head of Boeing. What are you going to do? Maybe you can't go to South Carolina. You don't want to stay in Seattle. Where are you going to go? You're going to go overseas, right? And so it's just crazy. I have never in my career heard of such a move by an unelected bureaucracy that basically tells a, uh, a corporation, one of the world's largest corporations, that they can't go to a state to establish a factory and hire people to work there. It is crazy. What do you think President Obama is saying like to the NLRB or, or what do you think of me? Does he just have a I mean if there's if you're so certain of what you say and I talked and of course President Obama won't talk to me I'd love to interview him but he won't so I've, I've got to ask you these questions but you know what do you think he's saying what would he say in response? I don't know what he possibly could say about this NLRB decision because frankly I never imagined such a decision would be made by an unelected bureaucracy. Certainly a law could never have been passed to mandate such a thing. Um, you know the president is one inexperienced and two I think that that he has this idea of you know spread the wealth around and that rich people ought to pay more. I. Under, uh, uh, I don't know why. But I don't he's know almost, why. I, mean, if you look I stumbled at around it, enough to say I don't know because he's never shared his <laughs> views with me except in a debate format. <laughs> <laughs> but if you, if, you, if you look at the numbers though with unemployment, he, you know, it's unlikely he can turn around unemployment in the next 13 months before election. If you look at all the, you know, the housing starts, all the economic indicators, they're really bad. And it, if I were in his shoes and I were looking to get reelected, I would try something new or different because he's really running out of time. In the meantime, we're all waiting. Cut the corporate tax rate, close the loopholes, give the uh, business community some confidence as to what the future is going to be, put a moratorium on regulations, and also uh, give the employer and employees a tax break. Uh, and those at least would be a excellent beginning. But give business some kind of surety as to what kind of future they face and I guarantee you they will unleash it. There's a trillion dollars sitting overseas. Why not tell the corporations that are keeping that trillion dollars overseas, look, if you'll show us a plan where you'll invest that trillion dollars in the United States and hire employees, then we'll let you bring that money back and you won't have to pay taxes on it. Why not do that? Otherwise they're going to leave it over there. Business in America is sitting on one and a half trillion dollars. They're not investing and they're not hiring because, again, of the uncertainty. And that's not John McCain's uh, word. I, I ask uh, your uh, viewers, many who are small business people, go ahead and email Greta as to whether I'm telling you the truth, or telling her the truth or not. I think you're going to get a lot of emails. Well, I hope they do. E I, do I do hope they email because yeah, I, I'd, I'd love to know. I'd, I'd like to even know the other side of it and have a hard time getting that that uh, information. All right, troop withdrawals. Uh, what do you think about the president's plan to withdraw troops? They have said that it's not the case, but it's published and it's uh, uh, in all the media that, in fact, they're going to withdraw to 3,000 troops. I would rather have no troops than 3,000 troops because we just would be putting Americans in harm's way, as we did in Beirut, as we did in Somalia, and we have other times in our history. It's not enough. We need at least 10 to 13,000 troops on the border between Kurdistan and Iraq. It's very dangerous uh, for technical and uh, intelligence intelligence capabilities and to help with their air force. No military person is, has recommended a low number such as 3,000. So when do we hear? I mean, like, you know, we read in the media it's down to 3,000. I mean, is it that the president doesn't yet, hasn't yet made the decision or it's strategically unwise to tell us this? Or is there a reason why we don't know what the troop withdrawal is going to be? 
And yeah. you might be the wrong person to ask again, but he yeah. won't talk to me. But the, the uh, we're nearing the end of the year when all American troops are supposed to be out. Uh, we're now two months, we're getting close to two months away. October, November, December, three so, months away. So, so do you so, think he's decided and just doesn't tell us yet? And he may not, I mean, he doesn't have to, I guess, but. I don't know, but he has to tell the Congress because there has to be funding or no funding or, or whatever it is. Um, for a long time, the Iraqis have been willing to sit down and negotiate this number. Each time there has been a failure of the administration to come up with a concrete number of what they recommend. Um, we lost nearly 4,500 young Americans in Iraq. I would hate to see this post-conflict phase cause Iraq to return to a state of chaos or disunity or the kind of bad things that can happen if governments can't function, if the government of Iraq can't function. I'm very concerned about that. When is sort of the drop dead date that you need to know in terms of the Congress needs to know? What would you, because we We're are We're already doing into. appropriations bills, as you know, and the fiscal year ends on the 1st of October. I thought we would have arrived at this conclusion long ago. Is there a problem that you don't know now? I mean, a legitimate military strategic, even a congressional problem that you don't know yet? The way this town works is that number of 3,000 was leaked. And then there's been a very strong reaction, both from Republicans and Democrats, on this, this issue. So I think they may be revisiting the issue and haven't come up with a conclusion yet. The problem is you've got to get the agreement of the Iraqis as well, and we are running out of time. Senator, thank you, sir. Thanks for having me on again.